So I'm moving to my next topic, working with the Spark Shell. So why, why I'm giving this uh, log4j properties in start of a topic, working with Spark Shell? Because this log4j properties will allow me to do some of uh, configurations, basic configuration on Spark Shell. So suppose I don't want to all of the informations to be shown in on the console. Okay. I only want errors to be there. If any error form, then it will show to me. But if you are opting the info part, then it will show you all over the debug informations. Like what which Spark version you are using, which uh, Spark context initialized. Okay, so which which configurations libraries loaded. It will show you the parameters also. What parameter is uh, you have set, or what parameters it have uh, taken by default. Okay, the, um, parameters like executor codes, executors number, number of executors means, and all of the other parameters also. Suppose I'm using a Kafka library there. So it will also show me the library is imported there. Okay. So all of the debug informations it will show. But if I want or don't want to show uh, all basic informations, then I will change my log4j property here. Okay, this is a part of that the Spark Home slash on log4j properties, and this is a uh, this is a property you have to change. This is a line you have to change. log 4 jtrue type tree is equal to error, comma console. So it will show you uh, only errors then. There are also other properties. You can set it uh, if required. OK, the pattern of your uh, conversion pattern, in which form it will show you the errors or info part. So this is how you can open a Spark Shell uh, by Spark Home slash pin slash Spark Shell. And it will show you, like, this is a previous one, so there is slide. So this will show you the version, current version of your Spark version. If you are using a 1.6, it will show you 1.6 here. It will show you the Spark context available as SC. If it is not showing this one, Spark and text available as a SC. That means your Spark context is not initialized. By this means, you're not able to use this shell. Probably there is some problem you have to fix first. Okay. If it is showing the Spark context available as a SC, then you can initialize. So, Spark, what is a Spark context, first of all? We have discussed, uh, I think you have read already the MapReduce one. So in the MapReduce, there are also the context, MapReduce context over there. What was the, uh, that context? Context is used to interact the input or output of counters from your framework. OK? So this is your uh, file which is in a local, and SC is a Spark context, which is a framework. OK, so this is, it is kind of a pipeline between your Spark framework and your driver program. So here, I am using, I'm initializing, uh, I'm take, loading my data, OK, into a, into a variable, which is of my file, and sc.text file. So it is a text file giving the path of that file, sparknotice.txt. If it is in HDFS, so I can, I have to give, give a URI, like HDFS colon slash slash, then a full path of your file. If it is in, uh, uh, so you have to give the all the URI path, OK? So that, that would be the best uh, practice for that. So I'm, this is an example program, so I'm not shown there. And it will show you this uh, string below as output. So my file, 
org.apache.spark.rdd is in the string format. So currently, it's, it is storing the string format. So it's an array of string. So outer, it is an array, and internal is a string. And I'm counting here number of lines. So how many lines there are in this text file? So I can I can count by my by dot count. And by default it is taking format as a long, data type as a long. 